Hello students, I hope you all are uh, watching my videos. So, in my previous class, we were discussing about uh, viral diseases that is uh, common cold, HIV, isn't it? Next, malaria, life cycle of malaria. So, we will uh, quickly revise those uh, slides. Viral diseases that is common cold and HIV, that HIV we will discuss in the next class. So already we discussed about common cold, that is the name of the disease is common cold, the causative agent or the pathogen was rhinoviruses, next how the mode of transmission, next incubation period that is usually 3 to 7 days in case of common cold, next what are the specific symptoms for the a common cold which includes nasal congestion, fever, headache, sore throat, hoarseness, uh, tiredness, running nose, etc. And the lab diagnosis was, there is no such a, a particular test for this, just by means of physical appearance or uh, uh, what kind of the symptoms are showing by the uh, person. So based on that, we can uh, diagnose the diet, common cold. Next, treatment. I told you people, there is no such treatment. You should not take any kind of uh, medication or treatment for the common cold. So as much as possible, try to use home remedy. Hmm. Next prevention, just use mask or cloth while sneezing or coughing. Hmm. And either viral diseases are measles, herpes, polio, dengue, and rabies. And try to find the causative agents for this. Next, this is what the lady is about to sneeze, the symptom of common cold. Next, rhinoviruses. Then protozoan diseases, again two examples are there in your cerebus, one is malaria, second one is amoebiasis, first one name of the disease was malaria and uh, the name of the causative agent or the pathogen. So there are three or four causative agents for the malaria, plasmodium vivax, plasmodium falciparum, plasmodium malaria and one more is plasmodium ovile. Next, uh, out of these three or four, the mass, most dangerous or severe malaria or we call it as a, a malignant malaria is caused by the parasite that is plasmodium falciparum. Next mode of transmission is only by means of biting of female anopheles mosquito. Hmm? This is what the mosquito that is female anopheles mosquito then the incubation period is usually 3 to 7 days sometimes it may go up to 15 to 20 days. Next, life cycle, most important one, life cycle. Please do understand the step by step uh, life cycle. That is when uh, plasmodium completes life cycle in two hosts, that is man and mosquito. See, first the parasites are carried from the female anaphylaxis mosquito from uh, infected person to healthy person. Then when mosquito bites an infected person, it will take the blood or just suck the blood as its meal. So along with the blood, the parasites enter into the mosquito's body. So then that mosquito bites a normal person and release those parasites or parasites into the blood of normal person. Then uh, from the blood, those parasites reach the specific organ or shelter called the liver through portal hepatic artery or hepatic portal artery. So within the liver, those parasites undergo a sexual reproduction and uh, finally they burst open the liver cell and comes out and entering into the uh, blood stream or blood circulation. So in the blood circulation they attack first RBC, within the first RBC they uh, undergo a sexual reproduction, At the same time they release a chemical or substance, toxic substance called hemojoin which is responsible for normal, sorry, uh, responsible for chill fever. Clear? Next, for at the same time in the blood they attack second RBC. Within the second RBC they undergo sexual reproduction and release uh, respective gametes that is male and female gametes. So now those male and female gametes are present in the blood of that patient. Clear? Again, when that uh, I mean uh, fresh mosquito bite that uh, infected person, they will suck the blood as their meal. Along with the blood, they will take uh, respective that is male and female gametes. Now those male and female gametes enter into the mosquito's stomach. So within the mosquito stomach, they undergo fertilization 
and undergo some further development to form sporozoites. Clear? So after that, they start migrating from the mosquito stomach to uh, salivary gland or gut of the mosquito and stored in the salivary gland of mosquito. When that infected mosquito bite a normal person, they release sporozoites. Again, the same cycle repeats. Clear? This is what the life cycle of malaria. This is what the malarial life cycle. Next, symptoms, high fever and chill, then uh, omitting sensation, fever recurring every 3 to 4 days, then nausea that is uh, feeling, omitting or discomfort feeling, then muscle pain or sweating, then the lab diagnosis that is MP test, that is malarial parasite test by taking the blood sample from the infected person as a smear. Next, treatment. Uh, there are some uh, prescribed medications are there like uh, chloroquine, mefloquine, hydroxychloroquine. Then prevention, avoid mosquitoes, then use mosquito repellents, then avoid stagnant water nearby house, then use mosquito nets and as much as possible try to wear full skew shirts etc. Next, I forgot to show this slide that is this is what the malarial parasites which are present within the red blood cell. So this picture shows that the malarial parasites are present within the red blood cell and one more that is I told you yesterday that is hemolysis rupture of RBCs. Clear? So in the blood when parasites attack RBC within the RBC they undergo asexual reproduction after reproduction they rupture RBC, isn't it? So this is what the parasites will rupture the RBC and comes out. This is what hemolysis. So during that then they secrete hemojoin, I told you people. Next, uh, we will entering into the actual class that is amoebiasis. Next protozoan disease that is amoebiasis, commonly called as amoebic dysentery. Why I am using the amoebic dysentery? Because one more dysentery is there called as a shigellary dysentery. So that the disease or the dysentery which is caused by amoeba is called as amoebic dysentery. Hmm? So again I am going to follow same format. Name of the disease is called as amoebiasis. Name of the disease is amoebiasis. And the name of the causative agent or the pathogen, the amoebiasis is caused by the protozoan or parasite is called Entamoeba histolytica. Do you remember the amoebiasis is caused by Entamoeba histolytica. Then mode of transmission, very important. So this is also carried by a mechanical vector, a mechanical carriers are house flies. Do you remember? So these house flies are going to act as a mechanical carriers, mechanical carriers and transmit the protozoans or entamoeba histolytica from fecal matter that is feces of infected person that is the fecal matter or stool from the infected person to the uh, drinking water, food and food products and thereby contaminating them. It means that these house flies are going to sit on the fecal matter uh, which is I mean uh, the fecal matter is of the infected person. Again they will come back and sit on the, the food or drinking water or food products whatever it may be and they are going to thereby the contaminating them. Clear? Next this is what the mode of transmission that is by means of house flies. Do remember. Next this is what the diagrammatic representation which shows uh, entamoeba histolytica. The diagrammatic representation of entamoeba histolytica. Next, this is what the life cycle of entamoeba histolytica. Life cycle of entamoeba histolytica. See here, first one, we start with the, this, the ingestion of in, uh, contaminated food and water. See that, this person or fellow is going to ingest the contaminated water or it may be food. The word contaminated water or food refers to what he is ingesting. See that is it may be food or it may be water. So that water is contaminated with the, that the protozoa that is entamoeba histolytica. It means see what he is eating that food contain the entamoeba histolytica. It is called as contaminated food. So what he is drinking that is water. That water also contain the entamoeba histolytica so called as 
contaminated water and food. So when this enter into the body, that mature cyst. See, these entamoeba histolytica entering into his body as a cyst. Clear? Right? As a cyst. Cyst means the egg or the protozoa which is covered by multi-layered wall is called as cyst. Do remember, these cysts are released by the intestine of this uh, infected person. Clear? Right? So we will discuss this. Next, so these cysts when enter into the body, so they enter into the intestine. So it means that for this entamoeba histolytica, uh, shelter is intestine. Clear? When this, when these protozoans reach the intestine, they undergo uh, encyst. Sorry, they undergo germination. They release from that uh, a multi-layer. So then they become real protozoans. So then starts. Uh, infecting the person. Clear? So then, these uh, matrices they become they undergo multiplication in the uh, intestine of this infected person. So then, what happens? Again, encystation, then the matrices. It means that when it starts infecting this human later, this again the entamoeba histolytica can form cyst in the intestine. So those cysts again released by this infected person along with the fecal matter. Do remember when the entamoeba histolytica entering into the body as a cyst. So those cysts entering into the intestine, within the intestine they get open called a germination. So then start spreading throughout the body and uh, resulting in the a disease which is present in the person. So later, after causing the disease, those entamestolytica again form cyst by means of a rapid multiplication. So again they form cyst. So for that process, the process of formation of cyst is called as encystation. So after the encystation, again these cysts can be released from that uh, uh, infected person in the uh, by means of a stool or a fecal matter. So again that fecal matter may be uh, contaminated with the house flies. Again house flies can contaminate the food and drinking water. Again the same cycle repeats. I hope you understand. Clear? Very simple. Next. Uh, incubation period of this uh, amoebiasis is maximum 2 to 4 weeks. Clear? 2 to 4 weeks. That is incubation period. Symptoms include constipation. Already we discussed about the constipation. It means irregular bowel movement. A person or any individual can pass the stool uh, two to three times per week. It's called as constipation or a uh, uh, difficulty to pass the stool. Next, abdominal pain or cramps. So this uh, pain in the abdomen region. It is called as abdominal pain or cramps. And one more is stool with excess mucus and blood clots. So the person, I mean the person who is suffering from amoebiasis, then we can observe the stool with the excess mucus and blood clots. So that stool or the fecal matter contain excess mucus and some of the ruptured RBCs or blood clots. Next, diarrhea. Diarrhea means the excess loss of water from the body is called as diarrhea. Excess loss of water from the body is called as diarrhea. It is also one of the important symptom in case of amoebiasis. Then water is stool. So as much as possible drink the water so that maximum water can goes out by the body in the form of stool. So called as watery stool. Next weakness. So uh, desire to sleep more and more. So no strength in the body is called as a weakness. Next lab diagnosis. Very important. Microscopic examination of infected person stool or fecal matter and presence of cyst in the stool of infected person. As I told you that uh, the person who is suffering from amoebiasis. So there what happens? When he ingest a cyst, those cysts reach the intestine. They undergo germination. Germination means they come out of the cyst and they start uh, spreading. Uh, so undergo multiplication. Then they start causing the disease. After causing the disease, again it is going to form the cyst called as encystation. Clear? So those cysts are present in the fecal matter of the infected person. So in the lab diagnosis, the, they are going to observe the cyst in the microscopic observation. That is what the lab diagnosis. It means that the person's stool or fecal matter which contains cyst means he is suffering from amoebiasis. Next, treatment. 
so simple treatment that is home remedy replacing lost fluid with an oral rehydration therapy called as ORS oral rehydration solution this treatment is called as ORT that is oral rehydration therapy which may help to prevent dehydration next anti diarrheal drugs such as lopramide may also help to cure the amebiasis next prevention safe drinking water then toilet hygiene food hygiene if food hygiene refers to so when you bring vegetables or fruits from the market so before eating we should wash it thoroughly next use hand sanitizers next avoid stagnant water nearby house so these are the what some preventive measures in case of amebiasis and last one is other protozoan diseases are sleeping sickness kala aza then uh, diarrhea and again homework try to find the causative agent or pathogen for the uh, sleeping sickness kala aza and diarrhea so we'll discuss in the next class thank you